Coming up, I'm on a visit to Kangaroo Island. Home of, you guessed it, kangaroos. Look at that. Wow. A goanna gives me the runaround. I don't know about his size, but he sure is handsome. And I take a siesta with one of the locals. <laughs> Australia is famous the world over for its unique wildlife. You could cover vast distances to see just some of what this spectacular continent has to offer. Or you can simply head to where I'm off to now. I'm on my way to Kangaroo Island, just 13 kilometres off the South Australian coast. A landmass famous for its rich variety of typically Australian wildlife. To prove it, how's this? I don't even have to get off the boat to meet some of the amazing locals. Its isolation means it hasn't suffered like the mainland from the impact of European settlement. For a start, it's one of few places spared from the destructive habits of introduced feral pests like foxes and rabbits. But it's not without its problems. A place like KI, as the islanders call it, is a magnet for tourists. A small island economy needs them, but it's a delicate balance that must be managed. I've only got two days here. I want to cram as much wildlife in as I can. many animals to see on KI, and not long to tick them off, I've made up a wish list. At the top, one of Australia's iconic lizards. I've only just got off the boat, but already I'm in luck. Down this hole is the first reptile spot for the day. It's called a Rosenberg's monitor and it lives in this heathy scrub. Now, being on an island, I wasn't sure what he was going to do. I've, I've caught them on the mainland, and you have to be fast because they take off, but I thought here on an island, perhaps no predators. Maybe he'd just sit there. But the second I get out of the car, he took off down the hole. And it must be deep because I can't even see the tip of his tail. If I don't spot one for the rest of the day, I'll bring something to help me catch a glimpse. Just up the track, I've seen something of interest. Best homes for tiger snakes. That tin's nice and warm in the afternoon. The tiger snakes on KI differ in a few ways from their mainland counterparts. For a start, they're darker, which retains heat. Important in a climate more susceptible to colder extremes. They also tend to grow a fair bit larger here, mainly due to their diet. Frogs and skinks are replaced by an annual gorging on mutton bird chicks. What doesn't change is how deadly they are. Tigers are the fourth most venomous land-based snake on Earth. Combined with a fiery temper, they are not to be messed with, no matter where you are. No tiger under here but it looks like I found myself another venomous Aussie icon. Look at that. That's a red-backed spider. It's late afternoon and I'm out looking for tiger snakes and goannas, but tin like this and rubbish, as messy as it looks, is actually perfect hiding spot for reptiles because it stays warm. But in this case, it's a big old red-backed spider. This one's particularly interesting. It's about as big as you'll ever see, and it's had a little skink for dinner some time ago. Now it's just dehydrated, but it sucked all the goodness out of that skink that's probably gone under here for a bit of warmth and a sleep and got caught up in the wrong spider's web. I can tell this is a female because of the size, but also because of the egg sacs. And at the moment, they'd either be little eggs, spiders might even have hatched inside and just haven't come out of that sack yet. I'm gonna flip her over and put her right back where she was.
As you might have guessed, the island is home to a population of kangaroos. They're in fact a subspecies of the Western Grey. They're a little smaller than their mainland cousins, and to help with the Southern Ocean's winners, they've developed a thicker coat. One thing they have in common with roos everywhere is the sense to avoid the heat of the day. They'll bed down in the shade and emerge at dusk to go out and feed. And the name of these remarkable creatures? Well, Kangaroo Island Kangaroos, of course. Just when I thought the day was over, I spot something shuffling across the road. Look at this. This is a little echidna. It's one of Australia's two monotremes, the echidna and the platypus. Echidnas are found right across Australia and many little islands offshore, just like Kangaroo Island. And what he's doing right now is the key to their success. It's their protection. He's able to curl himself up in a ball, just showing the spikes. Now, if I was an eagle or a dingo or a goanna, I wouldn't be able to eat him. Any time I tried, my mouth hit spikes. This little fellow was in the middle of the road and there's cars zapping fast and it's a bit of a problem on the island that I've noticed. There's so much animal habitat on either side of the highways and cars go zapping by. But I've brought him off the road now and into the bush. Truly iconic Australian species, the echidna, and I love them. It's time for you to go, mate. Another great find, but I'm exhausted. That's definitely enough for one day. I'm back at the Rosenberg burrow I saw yesterday. This time, though, I've got a secret weapon. I brought something with me that I've never used before, and it's an endoscope. On the end of this is a little camera that operates to the computer and records, and I can stick that down the burrow. I think, and I'd guess, that the monitor's gonna be back here, about 30 centimetres under the surface, probably asleep on a day like today. I'm pretty excited to see if I can find him. So I'm gonna bend this up a tiny bit and feed it in. Now they like a spot like this where it's raised. If they go too deep, it's way too cold. Too high, too hot, or it's exposed. So normally it's about that deep and it'll be up to a metre long. Here we go. Ah, oh, look at that. Somebody's home. But at this moment, all I can see is pattern. It's just his body. Oh, there's a big hiss. He's hissing, so I just touched him. I'll come back a bit. Look at that. There's a cavity at the end of that burrow that is about that round, as I can see it. And at the moment, I've got a side view of what I think is the base of the tail. As I work the endoscope around the goanna, other features come into view. Okay, so there's a foot. I really want to get a look at his face. Okay. And there's his ear. And look at that. A bright black eye looking back at me. Well, that was a lot of fun. To get images like that with a bit of technology, that's something pretty new to me. But what I really want to see is a lizard in the hand. I've caught Rosenberg on the mainland, but here they're a bit prettier, a little bit smaller. Something I just got to see. The goannas were once common all along the south coast of Australia, but now KI is their last major stronghold. Just minutes away from the burrow, I've spotted another one, but this is not how I wanted to find it. I heard about this on KI, and here's the proof. That's an adult. Full-size, reproductive, female, Rosenberg monitor has been splattered by a car. Now, these roads are clean, and if you're looking for a monitor, it's pretty easy to see one. People need to slow down. This lizard's reasonably common over the island, but it's seriously threatened. And the number one threat is vehicle strike. Very sad.
One tourist season saw 570 reported road kills. That's a massive amount for an island population to sustain. I'm starting to think that handling KI's famous Rosenberg monitor isn't going to happen. Think of Aussie icons and names come thick and fast. There's the koala and roo, of course. The Sydney Harbour Bridge and Uluru were another two. But I'm off to see one of the feathered kind. Raptor Domain is a sanctuary for sick, orphaned and injured birds of prey. It also raises awareness through educational displays, using birds that, for one reason or another, are unable to be released. Now, I do a lot of bird spotting in my travels, but it's not often I get up close to one of my favourite Aussie raptors, the wedge-tailed eagle. Today, I'm about to get my chance. Dave, that show was amazing, and this place is amazing. You've done such a great job. Oh, thanks, Tim. Yeah, um, we, we do the best we can. We like to educate people and yeah. entertain them at the same time, and that's the best way to get conservation happening. Dave Irwin is the owner of Raptor Domain and has been interested in birds of prey all his life. You've got birds that are in need of care and they're not just being cared for out the back somewhere. You're engaging with visitors and I saw the look on their faces. They, they were blown away and, and all know something more than they came here with. Exactly, yeah, and particularly the kids. That, that's where I think, think conservation starts is with the, the younger generation. Uh, they're going to want to see those same animals when they grow up. Yeah, I'm keen to have a look out the back, but you've got to tell me who that is first. Oh, this is Nellie. Nellie's uh, just 13 months old now. She was taken from the nest by some boys when she was just a chick. Yeah. And uh, nobody wanted her, so we took her on here and she's turned out to be a lovely bird. She has a lovely nature as far as wedge tails go. Nellie's one of the very few birds that'll sit on anyone's glove. Particularly Mine? yours. Ah, sure. good. Let's have a look. Thank Whack you. on the glove there. There you go. Just grab those jesses with you. Like there you go. Jeez. And that's Neil. Instantly. <laughs> she's heavy. Feels great. Yeah. Yeah, she's four kilos, which is about right for, yeah. for a female. What a bird. So. Interesting that people look at the beak, and I'm sure react to that, that, yeah. oh, that beak's nasty, but that's very gentle and ticklish. It's... Yeah, it's, if they want to hurt you, they always do it with their feet. The feet are the yeah. weapons. Yeah, yeah. And the inside talon, that's like the meat hook, and that's, like, just with our finger and thumb. Yep. That's where all your pressure is yep. there. After landing, its front two claws anchor the prey, while its rear talon thrusts into flesh, dealing the lethal blow. So on that back claw, the meat hook, as you called it, do they have any idea how much pressure can be pushed with that? Yeah, they reckon about a, about a tonne per square inch on the hind talon. Oh. And that, that's, that's a lot. Yeah, she's giving you a glove a little yeah, bit. Oh, yeah, she's giving it a squeeze. That. And what's most amazing, with it, people don't realise that each toe has a locking system in it, so when the bird locks its toes, it's locked. It's and, in and place. No one's leaving unless the bird wants to let it go. OK, Tim, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll go and have a look at some more birds. We're going to head out the back. Sure. Great. I'll give her back to you. Yep. Thank you, Nelly. Don't forget that, mate. don't usually get to see our back. When a bird is brought in, they'll get assessed by a vet and go into a hospital cage. Then, as they recover, they're placed into a small aviary. And this, this is little Hobbit. Hobbit is a little hobby falcon. She's about eight years old now, and she's one of the sweetest little birds you'd ever meet. Now, she had a power line when she was just a young'un. Yeah. Um, so she can fly, but not particularly well. Yes. So, so she'd never be a candidate for release. But uh, she's just a real little sweetheart. This is one of the nicest birds you'd ever meet. She, you could make her your girlfriend. What a beautiful little bird. It's no wonder the team here have dedicated their lives to helping orphaned birds like her. Before I leave, Dave's got one very special patient to show me. Have a look at that. Casper is a barn owl, who, just like other owls, has a complete arsenal of hunting tools at his disposal. 
You see, he's got little hairy toes. Yep. That's really important because little hairy toes, they cut down the sound of the feet through the air. Just before he catches a mouse, there's no whoosh sound. His feathers are as soft as velvet. You ever feel how soft those feathers yeah. are? You just won't feel feathers softer yep. than that. Yeah, well, you, so you, you almost can't feel them. Yeah, and of course, he catches sound with his face. So you can detect a mouse yeah. in the grass. One giant on ear. A, yep, on a, on a cool, crisp night, about 100 metres away. Their, their hearing is astounding, as is their nocturnal vision. Yeah. Uh, and their diurnal vision's just as good. They see just as well as we do during the day, yes. albeit in black and white. Well, you're doing a great job, mate. Thank you for having me here. It's nice to see no you. Yeah, yeah, my pleasure. You're doing great things. It may be called Kangaroo Island, but in my opinion, it could easily be named after this lot. Of only 15,000 Australian sea lions left in the world, 85% of them live in South Australia, with Kangaroo Island hosting the largest colony. And of all the places to spot them, it's here, at the inventively named Seal Bay, that you're guaranteed to get a good view. Their days are filled with a mixture of play and feeding, but they seem to do what they love most. And that's sleep, and a lot of it. Almost always in the safety of a large herd, which is why, just up the coast, at nearby Bales Bay, I was surprised to find this lone ranger. I've just walked maybe a kilometre up the beach because I could see a black dot just near the water's edge. And when I looked at it, I saw it flick up and the head move. <laughs> this looks like a young male to me. And perhaps because he's a young male, the beach is a safe spot, a refuge, because if he's with the main seal colony, the big males might give him a hard time. So this is a place where he can rest, get his strength, energy back. I just can't believe how big he is. He's just having a look at me now. And with that massive frame come some big features, all of which help him survive in the harsh southern ocean. You start to see those monstrous big whiskers that are so good for feeling their way around underwater. The big nose, beautiful eyes, that fur, just waterproof, so dense. It shows you that mouth. Those big teeth are used for grabbing onto fish. I mean, they feel their way through the water. Brilliant smell on the whiskers, but when they find a fish, they're slippery. They need teeth that can penetrate those scales and just grab on. I'm going to leave him now. I've only got a few hours left before I have to catch the ferry. And there's one thing that's still eluding me. I love my reptiles, and I can't leave here without getting up close to a Rosenberg. I was told the island was teeming with monitors. But so far, I've only been able to catch glimpses of them, or lifeless on the road. Rosenberg. Oh, he's taken off. Look at that. Wow. Hello, mate. That? is a Rosenberg's goanna. He's not quite full grown, but they don't get much bigger than this. Funny to think, that's the top order predator, apex predator on the island. And I was lucky. I saw him there and he took off over here and I'll bet he's got a good burrow, but this time he happened to pick one he couldn't quite fit in. So his head was in there, the body was halfway in, grabbed him straight by the tail. I am very happy to get that. Rosenbergs don't get as big as Perennies, Australia's largest monitor, or lace monitors that are common along the east coast of Australia. But on an island, there's limited resources and limited food resources, and that dictates how big you can get. I don't know about his size, but he sure is handsome. Look at the teeth in there. Even for a small monitor, he's got a mouth full of choppers and sharp claws. He'll use these weapons to kill his prey biting down with those sharp teeth before thrashing about with his powerful neck. However, like we've seen, they're no defence against a speeding car. 
Monitors are my favourite lizards. I mean, have a look at that. It's dinosaur-like. That long, sleek body, powerful tail. They're just unbelievably supreme predators. Like all monitors, it has a long, forked tongue. That smells the air. And the fork enables it to tell which way the scent's coming from. If it's stronger on the right-hand side, it'll turn to the right and track down its food or scavenge a carcass that's lying about. This island's full of wildlife. Kangaroos, echidnas, koalas, tiger snakes. But for me, this is a highlight. It's time I let him go. Here you go, mate. It's just starting to rain, but a Rosenberg goanna, it doesn't get any better than that, you little ripper.